We are um, in a different location than normal uh, because we wanted to specifically highlight a special project that is uh, at kind of a exclamation point in its uh, development here. And that is the hydro, the aquaponics uh, project which um, LACNIP has undertaken with resources provided by the uh, uh, Wells Fargo um, grant that was awarded uh, to, uh, to LACNIP a couple months ago. And I want to invite up uh, Matt Romick to um, talk to us about the project and the special point that we are now at uh, with the project. Uh, for the media, uh, Matt will be available to uh, uh, show you and uh, the uh, installation out back when we're done and uh, the, the point at which it now has developed. Matt? All right. Thank you. Do I have to talk in yes. to this? Yes, okay. <coughs> So first of all, I want to thank you all for coming out to LACNIP, um, specifically to take a look at the aquaponics. Um, before I talk to you about aquaponics, I want to thank Mr. Mayor for his hard work in the um, getting us the $50,000 grant for the aquaponics. And as a sign of our appreciation, we would like to donate the first three different types of varieties of lettuce to the mayor. Uh, <laughs> We have a black seeded Simpson, which is a light green lettuce. We have a mixed greens, it's all different types of leaf lettuce. And we also have a red romaine um, lettuce. Um, you all can look for that aquaponic lettuce starting next week at Chief Supermarket on Cable Road. So what is aquaponics i guess is what we're here for um, aquaponics is the combination of aquaculture raising fish or seafood in tanks along with hydroponics soilless water growing um, in the back back there we are able to produce uh, leafy green vegetables in 38 days from the time that we seed them until it's ready to harvest 38 days is what that lettuce took us to grow uh, doing it herbicide and pesticide free so n adding no chemicals to that water whatsoever using fish waste and beneficial bacteria to clean the water for the fish and provide nutrients for the lettuce it's really cool uh, and, and I will show you all when we're done here today so mr. mayor thank you for your efforts in the getting us the grant and look forward to continuing to be able to grow well I want to be clear I literally did nothing <laughs> I appreciate the the acknowledgement of the grant but fundamentally the the notice came across my desk I shipped it down to Connie and said let's I don't think we have stand a chance because we don't have a Wells Fargo a bank in our community uh, and Wells Fargo was conducting this national competition. And I said, but why don't you write this up and just see what happens? Well, we were really fortunate uh, to be awarded we, uh, the grant. And um, it really is a terrific installation that uh, is now here. And I know that LACNIP has uh, some hopes that uh, this is just the first phase of what will be a um, substantial aquaponics uh, operation uh, potentially here but perhaps at other locations as well and uh, it, it really is you can see a beautiful um, harvest and um, you'll also see the in the back the size of the what had been little uh, I guess they're called fingerlings of tilapia are now about uh, uh, mid course in their development so um, very, very significant, uh, uh, I think, effort on behalf of, of LACNIP. And will be, it's all part of the effort around community gardening about the idea that we ought to be doing more to grow locally, grow sustainably, grow without or, uh, chemicals, uh, and in ways that will foster uh, healthy living. So uh, that's all really good news that we've come this far. 
Um, I want to move on now to uh, Chief Martin, and he has some announcements uh, regarding the um, uh, community partnerships that uh, the Lima Police Department wants to acknowledge. Chief. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to ask Sergeant Garlock and our three neighborhood officers to come up here as well. Um, we're going to have to try to squeeze in here as best we can. <laughs> Community policing has at its foundation partnerships, and it's these partnerships that begin with a commitment to building trust and mutual respect on both the part of the police department and the rest of the community that we serve. Establishing cooperative partnerships and ensuring that, we're all, that we are all working together is absolutely critical uh, to being able to provide for the public safety in our community. The Lima Police Department alone cannot keep our city safe. We have to depend upon our entire community to succeed in fulfilling our mission statement that says the Lima Police Department is committed to excellence. It is our mission to work in partnership with the community to, to improve the quality of life by creatively solving problems related to crime, the fear of crime, and neighborhood decay, and to safeguard the constitutional rights of all. Now, the three neighborhood officers, two standing to my right and one standing to the far left, they realized a need for the Lima Police Department to be able to say thank you to those members of our community that are willing to go above and beyond in partnering with us. So they took it upon themselves to develop this community partnership award, which we will be giving out for the first time today. They developed an award as a way to honor persons and organizations that are making significant contributions to our community by dedicating their time, talents, and other resources. In other words, uh, we're honoring people who have chosen serving others as a way of life. The list of recipients today by no means exhausts the names of those who deserve to be recognized, but our neighborhood officers felt that this was a good place to start. Today's awards, though just the beginning, will continue going as we go forward. The first honorees to be recognized today, though, are exceptional people and organizations that exemplify what it, is, what it means to be caring, are willing to accept responsibility to help meet the needs of others, and are community problem solvers. So as I call your name off, I would greatly appreciate it if you would come forward. First, we'd like to recognize New Life Assembly Church and Pastor Bob Wardle. New Life Assembly Church and Pastor Wardle have been a shining example of how to work in cooperation and form a positive atmosphere of teamwork. Pastor Bob and the church congregation have been nothing short of amazing through the entire COP development process. From the beginning stages of building the partnership to the present day daily cooperation and sharing of ideas. New Life Assembly Church provided an office to House Patrolman Rody, even though space was limited. New Life Assembly Church also provided their entire building and property to house the first annual COP Community Day. The church congregation has on numerous occasions provided so support to the COP program, whether that be material or other resources in nature. Pastor Bob is a regular contributor to COP ideas and has been a terrific asset to the new beginnings of the COP program. Pastor Wardle, thank you. And I believe you have the... Uh, Our next honoree is St. Mark's United Methodist Church and Pastor Barb Daffler. They too have shown the true meaning of teamwork and partnerships. Pastor Barb and her congregation have been a blessing during the entire COP process. St. Mark's United Methodist Church provided a beautiful office and access to their church to make the entire process go smoothly. The grand opening of the Precinct 1 substation was an example of how a community can truly come together and support the police department. Pastor Barb and the congregation have worked very closely with the Lima Police Department to create the best atmosphere and to make the COP program a success. And I would like to also thank you as well. Thank you very much. Next we have the Bradfield Center and Keisha Drake. Keisha and the Bradfield Center have donated a tremendous facility to develop and assist the COP program's mission and ideas. The Bradfield Center is going to be a great place for the youth and community to grow together in partnership, developing a better neighborhood.
The options of community outreach are limitless with the Bradfield Center and the cooperation between its faculty and staff along with COP officers will be a valuable asset to maintain for many years to come. And if I may add, uh, Ms. Drake and I have had a conversation in which she has some incredible ideas as to how we can go forward and even strengthen that partnership more. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Stephen Jenkins and Crime Victim Services. Stephen and his organization have been an integral part of the initial COP process. Crime Victim Services has graciously offered equipment and resources to the COP program, has been thoughtful and considerate in choosing said equipment, and has even helped to install said equipment. <laughs> Stephen Jenkins has been involved in each of the grand openings thus far and has been more than willing to assist in any way possible. His numerous experiences and knowledge lend a helping hand to the young COP program along with his contagiously positive attitude. Stephen has shared wonderful ideas with the COP staff and he is a partner we hope to have for many years to come. And if I may add, Crime Victim Services is one of those organizations that they have certain um, experiences, uh, certain bits of knowledge and certain uh, uh, resources available to help people that we at the police department just could not do. So to be able to have them connected so closely with our community policing program is a benefit to everyone as it will help to ensure that people who need their uh, services will be able to receive them. So Stephen, thank you. Thank you very much. Now we have one last one who is not expecting this, but I would like to ask Community Oriented Policing Assistant Linda Kahn to come forward. I was under very strict orders by the neighborhood officers not to let Linda know that they had nominated and selected her for an award. But Linda is the dictionary definition of an amazing volunteer. She gives her time and energy to the COP program and offers incredible ideas and projects. Linda has compiled and orchestrated data to better assist the COP officers with their day-to-day -day jobs in their respective neighborhoods and is always motivated and positive. She offers expertise to the officers, which is invaluable to the growth of the COP mission. And I have to add, she also makes the most incredible cookies you could ever imagine. So, <laughs> thank you, Linda. Thank you so much. And thank you, Mayor, for allowing us this opportunity today. Well, as the Chief said, um, this is not, the, the re-establishment of COP is not a unilateral action by the police department. It truly is a community initiative and um, as illustrated by the partnerships that um, were acknowledged this morning, and I think over time it'll just become a very important um, fabric of people and organizations that ultimately sustain this effort. So thank you all for what you do to make that happen. Um, also this morning, John Schneider is here from LACNIP with information on, since it's the sun is out and the temperatures are mild, we have to start thinking about springtime. John? Thank, thank you. Uh, Otter River Cleanup, we need volunteers. I'm John Schneider from board member of the Lima Allen County Neighbors and Partnership, or LACNIP, and we're involved with this, as is the Otter River Coalition, uh, Keep Allen County Beautiful, and many, uh, City of Lima, and many other uh, church groups, civics groups, because we need volunteers. It's a collaborative effort. Uh, so it's going to be on uh, Saturday, uh, April 23rd, and we're going to provide maps for people, for the volunteers, they don't have them we'll have gloves for them and after it's over we'll have a, a light meal we'll have it we'll feed you and also give you a t-shirt so we'll give you some ideas about where you can uh, be involved in picking up trash to improve the quality of life and the beauty and the sanitation uh, for a great deal of distance along the Otter River it goes uh, through the city of Lima and in surrounding townships um, reg uh, registration will be at Red Cross uh, if people wish to bring with their families, if they want to register early, uh, there is some uh, forms that are available through the Department of Community Development, the City of Lima, but uh, it's a collaborative effort. Everyone is welcome, and also it's fun uh, when you're do active uh, with other people. Last year we had, uh, we estimate over 300 volunteers, 
makes bigger and better every year because this is something that we can do as a practical way to improve the quality of life and the beauty and the sanitation in our own uh, community. Again, that is uh, Saturday, April 23rd, uh, 9 a.m. to uh, noon, and registration is at the Red Cross South Collet. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. Um, <clears throat> this uh, normally also kicks off our our weekends of cleanup in the city generally, so we want to encourage everybody to kind of adjust their schedules to uh, pitch in and, and help. It's a, it's a great effort. Um, Kayla Monfort is here from Activate Allen County with uh, announcements as well. Hi, I'm Kayla with Activate Allen County with the pitch grant that we have here in the community. Hopefully some of you are aware of the, of the grant we have for health and wellness here. And we're kicking off our uh, fifth store for the Healthy Happens Here program. You probably have already been here many times talking about our programming for Activate Allen County and working to improve the nutrition um, aspect with some fresh produce options. So we're working with our small stores here um, in the community. So those small uh, local mom and pop type stores that people go in and out of for um, convenience items. A lot of times we're working to incorporate some fresh produce and healthy snack options in those stores. So uh, we're pleased to announce that Daryl and Daryl's on Rob Avenue, that location has uh, joined our um, our mission and effort to increase that, that option for um, residents to buy those fresh option, fresh produce options. So with Coca-Cola and Health uh, St. Rita's as well, we are working on to get a kickoff event work uh, for that and that'll be Friday. So March 18th this week, uh, Friday from 11 to 2, we'll be out at Daryl and Daryl's uh, with our partners and some other community vendors giving out um, some goodies, some free giveaways, some prizes, some gift cards, some food, um, and just to let them see the logo and um, what's been happening at Daryl Daryl's uh, with the owner there, Lisa Godfrey, who's really been um, instrumental in bringing this process quickly on to Daryl and Daryl. So we have our fifth store and we're also having a sixth store that you'll be hearing about very soon as well. So we're really excited that the program is moving forward um, to incorporate these healthy options here in the community. So we appreciate the time uh, that Mayor Berger gives to this organization and the cause for Activate and um, to allow us to come out here and announce another store. So we're excited. Thank you. Thank you. Well, as everyone knows, uh, we've been focused on food deserts in our community. And those are places where, um, frankly, residents don't have easy access to uh, healthy foods. And this, um, this is one solution uh, to correcting that, which is to work with the vendors that are already in place, folks that are uh, selling uh, other kinds of either convenience foods or the like, and I think Kayla and the staff at Activate have done a great job of, of uh, connecting with um, the owners of those stores, showing them how they can place and market those, um, those items. And as we've seen, I think, in some recent news accounts, uh, uh, they're making money doing it. And I think that's exactly what we need. That, it needs to be sustainable. It can't just be charitable. It has to be the kind of thing that, uh, in fact, works for those uh, store owners and also for the neighborhood residents that uh, patronize them. So I think the, the work that's being done here is a, a, a long-term strategy for how to, how to get uh, these kinds of uh, uh, food options uh, in convenient locations for folks to be able to uh, daily, in effect, renew their pantries uh, for, uh, for their households. So great effort. Um, lastly, this morning, Howard Elstro is here, uh, Public Works Director, with an announcement about our upcoming uh, groundbreaking, right? Well, something like that. Something like that. Um, Mayor asked for me to give a, provide an update uh, as to the uh, Lima Stadium Park project. Uh, we are currently out to bid. Um, I'd like to display a couple of panels here these two up first just clip them by the I want to tell a little bit of story these are very old renderings and uh, the name of the park back then in its concept was Bell Fountain Stadium Park and this the genesis of this project was uh, tailed after our strategic planning effort that we did some time ago and we recognized that uh, for a successful community 
we needed to address the corridors and entrances into our city, making them most appealing so that uh, people, when visiting Lima, they would be interested in living here, raising their families here, uh, or many people would come in looking for a place to uh, establish a new business. And we knew that uh, the front door and our main corridors through town were very, very important. Our, our front door presentation was important. Some members of, uh, of uh, Lima Sr. Uh, um, who were involved with athletics as well as our strategic planning effort came up with a concept to, in the 800 block of Bell Fountain Avenue, had been uh, many rental houses um, and suggested that we take an opportunity to look at that and redevelop that as a park which somehow also uh, keyed to the Lima uh, Stadium and uh, make it a community-wide welcoming point. We have been working on this project for at least 15 years and I want to show you now uh, the latest renderings of what the Slima Stadium Park will be. And in this photo, it just, it just sits right down there. In this photo, this is what the uh, Lima Stadium Park will look like. We have Spartan Stadium at the back. We have Bell Fountain Avenue coming here. We will have a centralized plaza, which will also be a splash pad. Uh, there will be the entire park will be lined in very ornate uh, columns and uh, similar to wrought iron fence around there with uh, gates welcoming visitors to the facility. The east side stadium parking lot will be resurfaced and will serve the needs of both the park as well as Spartan Stadium. There will be a multi-use restroom for both stadium visitors as well as park visitors. Uh, there will be landscaping, lighting, pedestrian walks through the entire area. It's going to be a very, very inviting uh, park, and it's also going to, the profile of the hill will be cut down so that as one comes down Bell Fountain Avenue, uh, the, the uh, Spartan Stadium will be featured prominently between the high school um, and the park. So we are very, very excited about this. We open bids April 7th. Construction will begin in May, um, and the work should be finished up by uh, November. One of the features that I just talked about is the plaza. Yeah, turn that over there. Is the uh, plaza splash pad, and this is a depiction of uh, what that will uh, appear like. Uh, so it, there will be concrete and brick benches around the outside and uh, a fully operated um, water park or not op 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 but splash pad in the middle. And you'll, you'll notice in the architectural features throughout this park that we have matched that of the stadium and the high school uh, by using the similar brick and uh, the other design features of, of those areas. So uh, in short, that is uh, what I'm here to present today. Some people may be inquiring about this traffic circle that is depicted on this panel. That traffic circle, that roundabout, is part of the east side grade separation. So we do not have funding for that at this point in time, uh, but for the purpose of rendering to see uh, the master plan or the design of what we intend to do in this area, uh, that was included. I should mention that um, the, uh, the real estate, much of the real estate was able to be acquired through the efforts of the R. Hale Family Foundation, uh, who uh, not only acquired the uh, houses that were once there, but also <coughs> demolished them and then donated that real estate uh, for the project. Lima City Schools also donated real estate um, for uh, portions of the, of the area. And, um, and then the city was able to buy the um, uh, site of the Gator Bar, uh, which I think some of you officers would be familiar with, uh, having visited there previously. Professionally, I understand that, yes. Um, and so that is now a part of the footprint of the project as well. Right, and uh, Matt Huffman was able to, uh, when he was state uh, rep, 
along with um, Senator Keith Th Keith Faber um, uh, were able to secure for us one and a half million dollars for the actual construction. So uh, the reason we're making this announcement uh, today is because we are out to bid. We have begun to have uh, inquiries since those are public bids. We wanted to make sure the public was aware that we are on track uh, and that, uh, as Howard mentioned, uh, we'll be under construction as the springtime uh, arrives. And it will take us through into the fall. We're, we're not going to have this done by the time football season ro rolls around. It's too mid-November is when we expect to be completed. So it's a, it's a pretty big project. It will inconvenience folks, as most of these kinds of large developments do. And um, we just want to give everybody a heads up. OK. I believe um, Matt Romick is going to, I should mention, Matt volunteers his time th uh, through LACNIP for the um, uh, aquaponics project. And he's really become a, uh, an expert in this entire endeavor. Uh, he is employed at um, juvenile court and I believe has involved some of the kids at juvenile court in, in the activities here. So there's a, you know, a, a genuine kind of development, uh, human development activity taking place here as well. So um, he'd be glad to explain the process of how all of that works back there. It's really fascinating. And I hope you stick around for for a tour. Thank you all for being here this morning. Gas. Yeah. Carbon dioxide, ammonia dioxide. We're pushing out all that gas from the water. And then down here, we are taking that nutrient rich water and feeding the plants that are floating on the water. Oh, it looks so healthy and beautiful. No, nothing. So this lettuce is actually a week past due. We should have harvested this last year, which would have put us at 38 days. We have a little shelf of seedlings. So from the day that we plant them, 38 days later, we'll harvest them. This is so these will go over here? Yes, in about seven days they'll go over here. Okay. So you're going to pick this today after this? There, this is all going to choose. Okay. How Come wonderful. On. So wow. herbicide, pesticide free, uh, all we're doing is using science to convert fish waste to nitrites and then to nitrates. And then the plants are absorbing that as nitrogen. And then underneath these rafts, we're returning the fresh water back to the fish. With now, about are you going to be delivering the same day at Chiefs so we get? Yes. Yes. Can you tell us what that is? They're, they're coming in to do some marketing stuff tomorrow. Okay. Um, and take the overgrown lettuce with them tomorrow. So. Okay. The tomato plants have been in, in here for 14 days. Wow. We planted them in our system when they were about an inch tall. It's only two weeks ago. That's two weeks ago. Not bad at all. Now, I will, I'll, I'll sneak around this way. I, I, I want to show you something before I, before I get out of here. Can I get out of here? Nope. <laughs> nope. Jackie Smith. I want you to take oh. a look at the root system. Oh my goodness. Wow. What we're doing. So that's amazing. We're just, just loading in water. And the stuff you see on the bottom is, is that beneficial bacteria. Mm -hmm. That's we're, we're trying to grow that bacteria on every that surface here. So it, wow. yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so once this is gone. I mean, so you're going to try to be able to move this.